there may be a few more stragglers in, but I don't. Is Donald Curry here? I yes, right here. Oh, hi, Donald, where are you? Where you? We're very fortunate today to have, first of all, we have a number of dignitaries in the room, but before you guys, I'm going to go with our tour guides here. We have the Gritners, who is uh, related to Audrey over here, <laughs> and Marilyn Sassy, and they're involved with the history of the Proctors, and also they'll give us a tour. Uh, with us, we also have Ray Gillen. Ray Gillen is the chairman of the Metroplex um, Authority here in Schenectady, and he is an amazing person. He's done so much. Well, maybe not that amazing. <laughs> Just a little bit amazing. And he's done a lot to make our, our city and county a little bit better, correct? Much better. A lot better. Yeah, much better. And much better. And Philip Morris, of course, is the CEO. He came here on March 4th, 2002 and really created a performing arts campus. Uh, and I'm sure he's going to tell you a lot more about it. His most recent addition was Key Bank, which is no longer Key Bank, but it's Key Hall. And they use that for weddings and all kinds of events. One of the biggest events they have here during the winter is every Sunday a farmer's market, which is called the Green Market. And it takes over the entire Proctor's area, except for the main stage. Mm. Uh, with that said, I'd like to, which one would like to go you first? Want, I'd like to break up. You sure? Okay. You want me to get a coin? <laughs> no, yeah, flip the coin. Um, I want to much for our community. Uh, her her sketchy Today Show is fantastic. Uh, no. She's really great, and uh, we don't say nice things about her now. She might say bad things about us on the show. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah. But um, I, I really, I'm kind of a Schenectady history buff, and I'm not just saying this because I was at the SCC graduation the other night, I'm on the board there, and one of the speakers said, this is the best class ever, this is the best class ever. And I'm a Schenectady history buff, and I think the absolute high point in Schenectady that we're trying to get back to is your year. 53. 53. I'm not just saying it because you're here. I swear to you, I can talk, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some of the history. What happened in 53? We, we finished second in the Little League World Series. <laughs> the following year in 54, six straight shutouts, and they win the world title. Wow. Uh, President, Vice President Nixon was playing up at the Mohawk Club. The uh, Speaker of the New York State Assembly was Oswald B. Heck oh, yeah. from Schenectady. Had been the speaker for like 30 years. Um, the sports teams you guys had were like crazy. I only have the statistics from um, the city, but the football team that year like outscored its opponents like 500 to like 20. Um, the basketball team under Sigma Fowski in Mount Pleasant from 1931 to 1952 went 354 wins, 24 losses. He's in the Basketball Hall of Fame over in Springfield. But you guys basically were the titans of sports, the titans of innovation. They invented the artificial diamond in 1955 in Schenectady, and the G stock went up three or four dollars. And they were having the shareholders meeting at the Armory, across from the old Van Crowler Hotel. People in the country were using appliances made in Schenectady: refrigerators, stoves, other appliances that were made by GE here. Kids played with toy trains that were based on the Alco trains and Alco locomotives. Uh, people took Alco locomotives on, on trips. Um, people watched the Today Show, the other Today Show, the with one, uh, yeah. Schenectady's, <laughs> Schenectady's own Dave Garraway, uh, who had you know Fred J. Muggs, and uh, he, he did the show several times from Schenectady. Uh, the jet engine was developed uh, out by GE out at the airport in Glenville. Um, we're going to be going there tomorrow, by the oh, way. Oh, that it, it, was, it was all developed there. Um, basically, the whole world got its electricity from gas and steam turbines made in Schenectady. Mm -hmm. This is where I always get into an argument with my wife, because she goes, every town did something. Mm -hmm. And she's from Summit, New Jersey, and they invented the roller shade, mm -hmm. which is not a very important <laughs> world invention. <laughs> the people in Schenectady invented the ability to generate and transmit electricity, which made modern civilization possible. Mm -hmm. Uh, we got to get over this Edison thing. He came up with the light bulb, but it was just like a circus toy until the people of Schenectady, you know, your parents and you know, grandparents developed the ability to do the big steam turbines and generators, which really lit up the world. People before that stood around fires, gas lights and gas stoves, but really changed the world. Uh, you won World War II. 
I, this is an incredible statistic that no one talks about. Every year the Defense Department says, here is our list of the top 10 companies that got defense contracts. Every year during World War II, GE, Schenectady, and GE Alco were in the top 10. So we had two of the top 10 producers of military okay. equipment, and, and that's why growing up in Schenectady, remember you always were told we were high up on the bomb list? Yeah. We were high up on the bomb list, yeah. right. because two of the top 10, we won World War II. We won, I mean, two of the top, so all the defense industry in the country, we, every single year of World War II, we were two of the top 10 between Alco and GE. Had the Navy Depot or in Glenville, uh, the Rotterdam Army Depot, the Schenectady Depot that was in Voorheesville, but people called it the Schenectady Depot. Nuclear propulsion was invented here. Admiral Rickover was here. The triad was how we won the goal of the Cold War. Dominance in land, air, and sea. And Schenectady was the, the arsenal of democracy. Um, Schenectady recovered from the Depression faster than any other area on the planet, I'm convinced of. One thing you, you notice when you drive around Skankty, there's hardly any WPA projects here. The only one I know of is the old city garage, which they just rebuilt over off of uh, Foster Avenue. But we didn't qualify because we didn't have the level of distress. Because the locomotive industry came right back after the first couple years of the Depression. And what did Roosevelt do during the Depression? He said, we got to light up the South because they have no electricity down there. At that time, the South was like Africa is today. It was a third world country. So Roosevelt brought the TVA there, and so what do they need to run the TVA, the Tennessee Valley Authority? Lots of steam turbines and gas turbines. Um, so it was, it was an incredible time. I, I really envy you because 53 and 54, and in my look back in the scanty history, and I'm from here, my mother worked at Carl's, and, and uh, I, I really am jealous because I, I really think that that was uh, a very, very watershed high point in Schenectady's history. And what we're trying to do now is get back up to that level. But there were signs then that things were starting to go awry. You know, we won the Little League World Series, but we had a Spalding baseball factory in Schenectady that were on strike for seven months that year and the factory closed. In 1953, and Schenectady people like to argue. It's one of our weaknesses. <laughs> Alco and GE got into a big yelling match. And GE said, fine, we're not going to be your partner anymore. They went to Erie, Pennsylvania and went into the locomotive business against Alco. Oh that, was, that was not good. And that started in 53. <coughs> Alco was on strike a lot in the 50s. Uh, the passenger car took off. Everybody got two cars, three cars. Now today it's four cars, five cars. And the locomotive industry went downhill, and Alco became a fringe player in a smaller market, and of course the plant closed in 1969 when I was 11 years old, and I can remember it like it was yesterday because people were so upset about it. And it's probably one of the reasons I got into economic development because uh, it was, it was a, a bad day for Skanky. The war economy started to ebb down, but there was still a lot of activity at GE. As recently as 74, 1974, there were 28,000 people at GE. Then the power business crashed. Remember Three Mile Island, 1979? Nobody wanted to build a power plant anymore. Nobody wanted to buy steam turbines and generators anymore. And um, so people stopped building power plants. And because, and, and we're, not like, we're not like other places where the dungaree factory moved to Mexico, or the shirt factory moved to China, or the vacuum cleaner factory went to India. We didn't do that. Nothing went anywhere. It's just nobody was buying power plant equipment after they almost had that meltdown at Three Mile Island. People just didn't want a power plant in their backyard. So the locomotive industry crashed, Alco closed, GE stepped in and was running full bore, but then the power industry crashed. And a very dark day, 1986, uh, they moved gas turbine to oh. South Carolina, which was a real blow. Bottom line, by the late 90s, you're down to 3,000 oh. people at GE, wow. and downtown was a mess. Mm -hmm. We had two closed dollar stores. There was a lot of studies done on how to fix downtown. There were 30-plus economic development groups in the county. They're all fighting with, with each other. Um, it really hit a, a very low point. 
they did a lot of what we call in the business spec demolition. You know, some, remember that phrase, if you build it, they will come? Well, the, the motto in Skenke back then was, if you knock it down, they will come. <laughs> they knocked down the train station. You know, uh, one of my least favorite people, uh, the former Mayor Ducey, uh, knocked it down and created a parking lot. Uh, literally paved paradise and put up a parking lot. Knocked down the Plaza Theater. When I came into this job in 04, either side of Proctor's had empty lots where they had knocked down buildings but had no plans to put up anything. So there was a lot of empty lots downtown, a lot of closed doors. And that's how Metroplex is formed, really out of the desperation of the late 90s when GE was really off the record. We would never say this publicly. got to shut off the camera for a second. No, just kidding. Um, we, we, you know, we really were at a very bad point where the community was so distressed that there was, there was clearly the potential for losing the, the GE works. And downtown was just a horror show. Carl's closed, again, a very sad day in my house, my family's household. But what we have seen, and the good news, especially for those that have you come back to town, <coughs> is starting in 04, really starting when Philip came in 02, but really picking up steam in 04 when the county and the city kind of elected a, a lot more uh, progressive folks and said, we've got to do something. We've got to kind of really start changing the way we operate in Schenectady. Um, a lot of good things have happened. Um, GE put their world headquarters for green energy in downtown Schenectady, Yay. which is huge, 650 jobs. GE built a new battery plant in downtown Schenectady, 450 new jobs. We've had 10 GE expansions in Schenectady County since 2004, creating almost 1,500 jobs. So while we were under 3,000, we're back up to almost 4,500 downtown, and we're over 2,000 up at the R&D Center in Iskiuna. We have created tax peace with GE. One of the reasons they were moving everything south is because they, were, they felt they were treated unfairly by the local tax jurisdictions, and they were always fighting in court. While other communities were courting companies, we were taking them to court. This is not how you do business. <laughs> Uh, I just thought of that. It's pretty good money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as theatrical as Philip, but it was. It was a, it, you might win today. Yeah, it, it was a horror show. It was a horror show, and we've created tax beats with GE. The biggest thing we did next to GE, and the most important thing that Philip did, but we ride in his coattails, was invest in Proctors. Metroplex put 10 million bucks into a 30 million. What is it? 40, 40 million. Was all 40 million. Who's counting? <laughs> restoration of this place, expansion, and Philip will talk about that. I don't want to steal his thunder, but what a difference it has made in downtown. We built a new hotel. We built a new movie theater with office space. We, we're building a new train station. We built a $30 million center city project across the street. We expanded the library. We built a new YMCA. Uh, we built a new headquarters for the Gold Corporation. We built a new headquarters for MVP. We built a new Union Graduate School. We've expanded Schenectady Community College multiple times. We have, since 2004, brought over $800 million in new investment into Schenectady County. Thank you. Most, most, of that, most of that in the city, most of that downtown. And we're not finished, at over 6,000 new jobs. And most people in the Skeptic, it's kind of like the Ronald Reagan rule, who of course started his political career in Skeptic, <coughs> speaking at the Van Curler and at the Armory. Um, most people think, you, you know, Skeptic better off than you were four years ago or six years ago. The downtown, certainly not what it once was, but it's a new downtown and things are, are certainly on the way back. What we really think right, right now, we're in the big, we are in the biggest building boom in Schenectady since the late 20s and early 30s when Schenectady really built itself out the last time. What happened in the late 20s and early 30s? Proctors got built. City Hall got built at the height of the Depression because we weren't as impacted by the Depression as other places. <coughs> the old Y got built. A lot of activity was in the late 20s, early 30s. There wasn't enough new activity in the 50s and 60s to replace that. So there was kind of a missed cycle in there. But that actually benefited us if you go to like Syracuse or a lot of other cities, you see a lot of ugly buildings that were built in the 60s and 70s. Not a lot got built in Schenectady in the 60s and 70s. So we're able to have a really nice street out here. If you go out, you see most of the buildings are from that last building boom. So what we focused on is where we had a few empty lots, we built some new buildings, but we've really fixed a lot of the old buildings. We've gutted them out. So we really are lucky that we, we were able to save the old architecture. So. 
Um, you know, we really believed, and again, we've done this since 04 in really a challenging economic environment, you know, in a really down economy because the national economy's been down. But we really believe that we have a sustainable, uh, exciting period of recovery underway in Schenectady right now. Uh, not only in the downtown, as Ann said, all around the county, and I could talk, you know, during questions and answers about Glenville or Niskayuna and things we're doing in Rotterdam, but the heart of the community had really been hollowed out by the late 90s and early 2000s, and we're really, really on a sustainable um, um, recovery period now, and we're very, very excited about it. The goal is to really put Schenectady back up on the map like it was when you all graduated from high school. And we had President Obama here a couple years ago to celebrate the success at GE. One of our biggest challenges is um, some of the negativity that people, we had such heights when you were there, you know, as you can recall, and we had such a steep fall that there is a lot of negativity still in Skanky, a lot of criticism, a lot of self-doubt, and it's one of the blessings for Ann's show and, and what Philip does and, and others to really get the positive message out that we have a national story going on here. We have a, re we, we went to the depths of, of low with the, with the loss of industry, losing, you know, literally 40 or 50,000 jobs in a short period of time. And the comeback we've had is, is, is really historic. So you've kind of seen it all. You were there at the height. You, you, if you were in town or if you visited, you saw it get really bad. But I think most people now, most people get it. Even the biggest doubters, the biggest critics, the biggest, um, you know, kind of accusers that are out there see that things are getting better. We're not there yet. And I'll close on, we, we, when, we, when we took over the downtown development, we chopped it into three pieces. This area, Broadway, Proctor's Block, down J to the old Big End Plaza where we built the goal of headquarters, 50 million bucks. That's pretty much done. Erie Boulevard is rocking now. You know, there's a lot of construction. It's going to look fantastic from a revitalized G plant to a waterfront development at the old Alco Works. And then Lower State will be done. I've got basically every building on Lower State Street uh, sold, going to be renovated. Lower State looks like the Proctor's Block looked like back in 04. We are going to fix Lower State Street, no question about it. So Lower State Street to the college, over the new, re newly renovated bridge, over to downtown Scotia, which we're working on things in the village of Scotia. So we have a great turnaround story. We welcome you back if you've been out of town. If you've been here, we, we hope you are as excited as we are about the recovery downtown. And it's, it's really a, a pleasure to to listen to Philip next because really so much of our success is really tied to Proctor's. Proctor's, those of you who live here know a lot of the story, <laughs> but our, those, that period of time that Ray talked about when elected officials sort of weren't moving right, I, I kind of say was the period when General Electric, when we left being a one horse town, one company town, and that sort of GE leadership, that quiet wink and a nod, here's what we're gonna do, we're gonna do this, and GE said yes, disappeared, and now we didn't have a political class. You know, we didn't have a group of people who are used to figuring this stuff out. So for 20 years with no political class, not a lot happened until the forging, incredible, of Metroplex, uh, which is the only thing of its kind in the state of New York. It's almost a regional enterprise, right? It's half percent sales tax, Schenectady countywide, with support to the towns, but focused on the two um, uh, retail corridors, Route 20 and Route 5. No one else does it. No one else has been able to do it, even though this has been modeled for 20 years, 18 years. It generates about six and a half million dollars a year that Ray and his team have done it's been a spectacular job at aiming toward redevelopment. With Proctors, we knew we needed to expand the stage or else we were going to continue to lose product. Uh, I, I call it the phantom effect. Phantom of the Opera mm -hmm. went to Toronto. Every city in America watched what was going to be a six-month run become a ten-year run and went, I want my, my piece of this too. And slowly across the country, about a hundred theaters built up big enough to handle Phantom of the Opera, but there was none of the capital region. And we went through years of negotiations with the palace of who would have it, Albany or Schenectady, and finally when I got here the board sort of said run, and so that's what we did. While we examined expanding the stage only, 
and there had been a lot of study at that. The Carl Company was empty, had been empty for a decade. Downtown was empty. It was 90% vacant. I mean, it was incredible. I, I'd never seen a downtown this bad. And like Ray, I'm a downtown watcher. This is what I do. I was born and raised in New Haven, and I worked in Chautauqua County and Jamestown, working in that downtown for 25 years. So this is all of the same. I feel like a Schenectady yeah. in my whole life because it's the same story. And I kind of went, how did this happen? And what we tried to do is build alliances with all the local businesses who might consider opportunities. And we sort of tried to come up with a plan that was bigger than just the stage. So at the end of the day, um, we expanded the stage, we built the G Theater, 440 seats, and probably that was the first commitment GE made publicly like that yep. since the bad days. Yep. Um, it was really interesting negotiating with them. GE and the GE family put about a million dollars into the GE Theater. And the naming of it was a big deal. Um, and it kind of said, we're not going anywhere, right? If they, were, if they were going somewhere, they wouldn't have done it. And that became part of the storyline of a now way different set of relationships. We built a small education center in the lower level of the Carl Company. We have our administration on this level, on this side. We have uh, conference facilities on this side. We do 50, 60 conferences a year. Next week we have the Theater Historical Society of America, two weeks from now, come in for a five-day conference. Um, national and statewide conferences, though the, the statewide ones went down with the recession, um, we still have quite a bit of conference business. Um, we also took on Key Hall, as Ann said, and made it a, a banquet facility and a performance space. But we also were worried about our neighborhood. We had watched, I hadn't, I wasn't here, but Proctors had watched <coughs> the neighborhood crash twice, really. Crash the first time in the early 80s, and then have the Canal Square project, which then crashed in the yeah. early 90s. And both of those crashes severely hurt whatever we were trying to do here. So we were only as good as our neighborhood. So part of our attitude has been, was, has been, and will be to support this neighborhood so that we're, the neighborhood's good. And that includes things like we built a power plant and we heat and cool the hotel next door, the Transfinder new building that's over there, the Y, that whole complex across the street is heated and cooled from underground pipes from Proctor's. Very unusual. The only private, not-for-profit district energy plant in the country. Colleges have them, central plants heating their many buildings, but not one player supporting their neighbors and being paid by the neighbors as customers. Um, we've reduced the carbon footprint of this block by 45 pounds of carbon an hour, which is incredible. It's three bowling games every hour, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. We worked with our neighbors behind us. Um, the City Mission's a great organization, and we just kept talking with them about ideas, ranging from doing chess, outdoor chess events once a week, which engaged people from the Mission who were great, were great chess players, they didn't even know they were great chess players, playing with young people, changing the tone of the street from one of, oh, I don't like what she looks like, I better call the police, to, it's okay, it's a community, and I know who this person is because we look at each other and talk to each other. And out of that came this program called the Ambassador Program. And if you come here for an event, you'll see a eight to ten people in red uniforms and hats, um, all of whom were recently homeless and then on recovery from the city mission, with the city mission, trained to welcome you, be eyes on the ground, and tell you where to get a bike to eat, and uh, where the bathrooms are, and where to park. It's incredible as they cross you across the street. We've had a few people volunteer with the ambassadors, and I'll never forget this, a doctor, an um, a, um, uh, internist, an in, in, internal medicine doctor, volunteered with the homeless people who we pay for to be our ambassadors. And he was at the street, crossing the street, and he said at the end of it, I've been a doc for 40 years. I have not in 40 years had as many thank yous as I had tonight. It was incredible. And that's how the guys feel, the women and guys. You know, they, they're 
trying to rebuild their lives and to have hundreds of people thank them for the simple things that they do is part of that transition. Out of about 38 people who have been in the ambassador program in the last four years, 10 of them have become fully employed elsewhere. So it's actually been a tremendous success. And it's part of that sense we're in a neighborhood. We're going to make the neighborhood work. People talk about downtowns and about Schenectady like there's some reason not to be here. In my 11 years, I've had one customer who has had his car broken into. One. You couldn't have better odds at the Crossgates Mall. Mm. Not possible. I left my, I had an old Volkswagen bus, and I put it in the parking garage for the winter because I didn't have a garage. I was in the garage for an entire winter, untouched. Think about it. Five <laughs> months, my car in a public garage, untouched. Downtown is incredibly safe, active, and vibrant. And we play a big part. We've gone from doing about 150 events a year to last year, 1,738. Wow. We've gone from about 100,000 people coming through the property, 110. Last year, over 650,000 people. Um, and it's all kinds of stuff. Ann mentioned the green market, certainly our big shows. But we have movies, we have conferences, we have graduations, we have recitals, we have President Obama's uh, um, uh, inaugural speech, we have, you name it, we're going to have 400 people here Sunday for the Tonys. We're uh, going to watch the Tonys in public on the big screen and have drinks and hear my votes, because I'm a Tony voter, and so they'll ask me, how come you didn't? <laughs> Pick any of these. You know, good thing you don't play the ponies. <laughs> um, so it's You're an extraordinary. A TV station too. Yeah, that's right. Right. <laughs> We've added. Uh, the city has asked us, and we took on being public access television. So open stage media. We have a great little studio in the front of the building now. That uh, we've seen it. Yeah, it was great. It looks really cool. Um, we're also the tourism promotion agency for Schenectady County. So uh, we're doing that. We also wanted to be active. So the building is not only just the 1,700 events, but we try to be very careful to space them and time them and do them at times that make a difference to our neighbors. So this year, for, the, for not the first time, but for the most active time, we made a commitment to a five-year summer residency of Circa Laws the theatrical side of Cirque du Soleil. And they're going to introduce their North American tour every year for the next three years from our building and mm. opening a Cirque camp, the first of its kind, oh, wow. uh, in the GE Theater. So we're going to have a camp for middle school and high school kids, and uh, Cirque du is doing their national, international debut in North America. Um, uh, it's pretty exciting, and it's quite a gamble. And at the same time, if over the next couple of years we can grow a real summer audience, we're going to make Schenectady someplace you go, downtown Schenectady in the summer. Of course. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> go to downtown Saratoga, why the hell wouldn't you come to downtown Schenectady? Well, two years ago, couldn't even quite imagine that. But that's where we've come. So, uh, you guys, I didn't realize you saw the best in 53. <laughs> <laughs> But you're going to see the best in uh, 2019. <laughs> We're back. Yeah.